So Froggy Fresh went on his Twitter and posted the notice of termination he got from Creator Clash on March 5th, 2023 for engaging in conduct that degraded and offended the event sponsors, obviously referring to the disparaging comments Froggy made about the event on a podcast from April 26, 2023. That item showed in his video as obvious proof that Froggy did indeed break his contract 11 days after the event took place. Froggy captions this on Twitter by saying, I know everyone's sick of hearing about this, and trust me, I'm sick of talking about it. So if you were over this, just scroll past. Don't worry about it. I get it. But I have to finally address this big point which Ian is saying they weren't threatening to sue me. Attached is the legal letter I was sent threatening legal action. I highlighted the important parts. Also to clarify, the only thing I had done up to this point is spoken to Ian on the phone and through text, trained with Sam Hyde and the OnlyFans joke. And of course, Marie and I's Twitter exchange, which iDubs didn't include in his video for obvious reasons. Since she was publicly discussing my removal from the event before I had had even been contacted regarding it, Ian's timeline of events is skewered. I didn't start publicly badmouthing the event until after I had been kicked. They kicked me and sent me this letter telling me to basically shut up about it. So that's pretty much it. The letter reads as follows. Re notice of termination of bout agreement. Dear Mr. Cassidy, as you know, Creator Clash LLC entered into a bout agreement with you dated September 20th, 2022, in connection to your scheduled participation in Creator Clash 2. Based on your recent conduct, Creator Clash has determined you have material breached Section 8C of the bout agreement, specifically by engaging in conduct that has degraded and offended the event sponsors. Based on this material breach of the bout agreement, Creator Clash is hereby providing you notice pursuant to Section 12 of the bout agreement that it is terminating the bout agreement effective immediately. Please be advised that you shall no longer participate in the event or any event activities, and pursuant to Section 8C of the bout agreement, Creator Clash shall have no further duties or obligations to you. In addition, please be be advised that the confidentiality obligations set forth in section 17 of the bout agreement shall survive termination of the bout agreement. Thus, Creator Clash demands that you immediately cease and desist from making any further public or private statements about Creator Clash, your participation in the event, the terms of the bout agreement, or this letter, or any of the participants or event sponsors of Creator Clash. Continuing to engage in such conduct will cause you to be liable for damages to Creator Clash, and Creator Clash will seek all remedies available to it in order to protect its rights. Creator Clash is presently evaluating all courses of action that may be available to it due to your actions and omissions, which have caused Creator Clash to incur significant damages. Accordingly, Creator Clash hereby reserve all of its representative rights, powers, and remedies under the bout agreement and applicable law, no failure, whether at this time or in the future, by Creator Clash to exercise, or any delay in exercising any right, power, privilege, or remedy that it may now have or may have in the future, under or in connection with the bout agreement, shall impair prejudice or constitute a waiver, or deemed waiver, of such right, power, privilege, or remedy, all of which are hereby reserved and preserved in their entirety. Notwithstanding the foregoing, as you know, Creator Clash previously advanced you $50,000 for training expenses in connection with the event which advance Creator Clash is entitled to be refunded in full due to your material breach of the bout agreement. Creator Clash will agree to release any claims with respect to the advance and any damages Creator Clash may have suffered. Due to your material breach in consideration of your signing of the non-disparagement agreement attached here to as Exhibit A, if you are in agreement with this proposed release, please execute and return the non-disparagement agreement no later than 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on March 27th, 2023. If you fail to return the closed acknowledgement by the specified date, Creator Clash shall seek all remedies available to it at law and equity due to your material breach of the bout agreement, including without limitation, seeking punitive and consequential damages. Sincerely, Richard Turris, General Counsel at Creator Clash LLC. And then here's the non-disparagement agreement that Creator Clash wanted Froggy to sign before the 27th. It says, I, Tyler Cassidy, hereby represent warrant covenant and agree that I shall not and hereby agree to use best efforts to ensure that all members of my team shall not make, publish, or in any other way discriminate or authorize any other person or entity to disseminate any false disparaging or materially misleading comments or remarks to any third party, including without limitation on in the press, social media, or via the internet about Creator Clash or any of its owners, officers, employees, personnel, family members of personnel, fighter participants, etc., and or the event or any event activities, and then it has a space for it to be signed 
which of course Froggy Fresh never ended up doing. Willie Maxwell responds by saying, Man, Ian, what the fuck is this? Emp Lemon says, Ian is such a fucking weasel, laughing my ass off. Shelby says, Don't worry, he still has his new audience. Last, I am surrounded by people who get me. People who understand me and people who think like me. Man, this feels good. Dolt for the meme says, You working with Sam Hyde does not equal you violating the disparagement clause of any contract. Ian himself is recorded on tape now saying it was always about Sam Hyde and that you knew this. By legally binding terms, they state it's about you, the individual. Disparaging. Not you and an outside influence, Sam. If they did take you to court, cite the clips as evidence. Cite the dates and timestamps of Beginning Work with Sam, the Anisa's OnlyFans clip, the Cease and Desist segment, slash termination of contract, contract clause receival. In fact, by the terms of this agreement stipulation itself, that whole cease and desist clause also means that you cease and desist both your participation and the agreement itself. The document is null and void by its own terminology, and if you seek damages as a non-profit, that's retaliation without cause. You can and should countersue them for wrongful termination, since they clearly lied about the terms of your termination both in private and on record in public. Harassment, slander, and liable, blackmail, etc. Please seek legal counsel, Froggy Fresh. Ian also only made the entire video to smear your reputation, and others, to ruin your image. It wasn't to clear up anything whatsoever. For the record, all the Buckingham clips and Rusty clip at the end was just obnoxious, and clearly targeting you as individuals. It was not an explanation. It was a great value brand content cop video. Except, instead of abiding by the laws of the internet, he's become the crooked cop, who drags you out of the car and beats the brakes off of you for having a tone with him, instead of actually committing any infraction. Action. We knew, we all knew, though Idubs thinks his audience only ever consisted of racist troglodytes, we all knew it was about Sam the whole time. The intelligent ones followed both of you and Sam. Perspective is everything in this world. Bro, for the record, I have followed you since I sat in a computer lab in the 8th grade, watching your music videos back on OG YouTube, for 2020-12 to be specific. It was one of our running inside jokes. We got so much enjoyment out of your content and your image, and you were genuinely wholesome. I respect that and always have. Why is Anisa even following what Sam is saying? And why is Ian obsessing over it as well? I thought he was done with that. The clips he used are out of an entire compilation that was recently released of Sam versus Anisa. If it's anyone he should have gone after or had a problem with, it should have been Sam all along. But oh, Ian's little bussy just couldn't handle being a man and fighting his own battles. So he came after you instead. If anyone should have been targeted for legal recourse, I hate to say it, but it was Sam himself, not you. El Yoko responds by saying, Ian and Anisa had every right to kick you from their event. Southern Cannibal responds, look son, a dumbass. PSYOP says, Imagine sending a legal letter to someone with that logo on top, laughing my fucking ass off. Samantha Hyde says, Thank you for being transparent about all this, Froggy. You got done dirty, and Idubs proved that by not disclosing all the facts in his video. Gameaholics responds by saying, They gave you 15k. You were disqualified and never fought. Pay back the 15k. Move on. You are more famous than ever been. Just swing it into Rev. This is a bad look. In a court of law, they'd win my guy. 499 responds by saying, Do you realize how stupid this is? This is like your employer firing you and then demanding you pay them for it. They'd be absolutely destroyed in court and they know it, which is why they decided not to sue. TRX 9921 responds by saying, if you want to make the analog of it's like firing an employee, it's like firing an employee who was caught breaking the rules of their employment, like stealing food at night instead of throwing it away, and then being asked to pay back everything they took while employed. 499 responds by saying, no, it literally isn't at all like that. It's like your employer paying for for you to travel. Then they fire you and demand the money for travel back because they were pissed and badmouthed the company after being fired. Micah responds by saying, some big huffs of cope there lad, to which 499 responds, talk about cope. You must not have watched Ian's crybaby video that prompted this. T-Rex responds, if you also watched the video, then you know Froggy was badmouthing prior to being fired. Anisa messaged him and his wife on March 12th, trying to figure out and resolve things after Froggy had already been badmouthing. Then he continued to badmouth and was fired. 
fired. Frog, you respond to no. I never badmouthed the event prior to being kicked. Provide proof I did. Left D's response to Froggy by saying, Squeeze every last drop of clout you can get from this. It's your only shot to try and get some relevancy. His boy Adam responds, You underestimate the pure Chad energy Froggy has. Left D's responds, Chad energy is basically pouring out of his 4-8 body. Froggy responds with laughing emojis, and then Left D's responds, Froggy, brother. I think you could have a chance being a decent content creator. Just stop with the Creator Clash 2 BS. It's been tired. Froggy responds, brother. I'm posting a threat that Ian says doesn't exist. Lefties responds, yeah, I saw your tweet. My point still stands laughing my ass off. Nobody really cares. Just move on. Don't make it your whole personality. It's boring to be honest. Froggy responds, brother. I never thought people would care this much. I just had to clear my name because his fans are saying I was lying about the legal threats since he said in his video that they had no intentions to sue. What do you expect me to do? Allow a false narrative to spread? Jen IRL says, so you breached the agreement that you, presumably, hopefully, read and signed and put on a surprise Pikachu face when they removed you? Hayden Field responds, what did he breach? To which Jen IRL says, section 8C of the agreement, it's in the picture. Hayden responds, all it says is that he somehow breached rules, yet doesn't say exactly what the breach was. This is legit garbage dude laughing my ass off. Jen IRL responds, it literally says he engaged in conduct that degraded and offended the event sponsors. Can you not read? Hayden responds, and I said that doesn't say really anything and is incredibly vague. He made one joke towards Aniza and only degraded the precious hosts. After he was unceremoniously kicked out and lied about, the trash man responds, making a public joke insulting one of the people who runs the event is degrading the event. Froggy responds, then why say in the video I was kicked out for collaborating with Sam Hyde? Not the joke? Emblemen quote tweets Froggy showing his notice of termination and says, please, by all means, continue boasting to me about how Ian is oh so morally correct in this situation. Froggy has been here since the beginning, responding to questions and posting receipts. Ian has posted did nothing but aggravated lip service and immediately disprovable hearsay. To people asking, why care so much about petty drama? He literally put multiple of my friends on blast with his god-awful response video. Am I supposed to just do the spineless thing and say nothing? Or may I possibly defend the people I care about? Deaf Noodles responds to Froggy by saying, From the wording on this letter, it appears Creator Clash fired Froggy for breaching some kind of non-disparagement clause, which would contradict the justification iDubs gave in his video for terminating Froggy. Without knowing the scope of the clause, I'm not entirely sure how training with Sam Hyde would qualify as disparagement. Safe to say Froggy's termination was poorly handled. Taylor responds to Deaf Noodles by saying, His public statements against OnlyFans and OnlyFans girls wouldn't be disparaging to Fansly? Deaf Noodles responds, I dub said in his video that the reason Froggy was fired was because of Froggy's associating with Sam Hyde. He said the OnlyFans statements had nothing to do with the termination. Repzilla responds to Froggy Fresh by saying, laughing my ass off, all you guys saying there was no legal threat just got proven wrong. Flamenco says, as much of a pain it would be for Froggy, I kind of hope it goes to litigation, just because there's a really good argument that Idubs has done more damage to the Creator Clash brand and his own than anyone else at this point. FPS Diesel says, I would like to apologize for calling Froggy irrelevant. He will be remembered, even if all the Creator Clash dweebs, dogpiled of which those other guys can eat it. Froggy responds to him with the 100 emoji. Lolo responds to Froggy by saying, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is pretty boilerplate language for a cease and desist, with an added provision asking them to sign something to keep the funds they had been paid following a material breach. Could see how someone might think this is a lawsuit, but it's really not. Not coming at anyone involved in this dispute. Just, if you've never seen a cease and desist, they use pretty similar language. If you were getting sued, you'll know. Jabroni responds to Froggy by saying, lol, Alana Pierce just straight up lied in her video saying this letter wasn't a lawsuit threat. This language explicitly threatens to sue you. Froggy responds, I know brother, shaking my head. Nick Diorio responds to Froggy by saying, just a reminder of how many lied on your name about this. Quote tweeting a tweet he made a month ago calling out Alana Pierce for her comments on the Froggy Fresh situation. Froggy responds, I know brother, I really feel annoying constantly talking about this, but it's like I have to say something, or people start saying I was lying. So reading Nick's older thread from April 8th that he linked under Froggy's tweet, it starts out with Nick saying, it's crazy how creator clash fighters who don't represent the event continue to come out and drop exact numbers to defend Anisa slash Ian dropping Froggy Fresh. Now they are trying to make it sound like Froggy stealing from charity laughing my fucking ass off. But that document is not litigation and it's not them trying to sue him. Um, essentially, Tyler Froggy Fresh was given $15,000 for training purposes. And for the record, I was not given that money. Um, I don't know if anyone else was. Um, I think it was effectively like a financial aid for him specifically because I, I guess he requested it. I'm not entirely sure how that went down uh, because he, he needed the help 
paying for training. I don't know how much money he spent. Um, I don't think that I've spent $15,000 paying for my training or my meals. Uh, it certainly costs thousands of dollars, but I don't think I would have spent anywhere near 15,000. And what they did was send him a letter saying, hey, can we have the $15,000 back? The reason they did that was because now that he's no longer fighting because of breach of contract, he had to be replaced. That money that was given to him is just taken out of charity at this point. So essentially, they're not going to ask him for money he doesn't have. If he doesn't have the money, he doesn't have the money. Um, and if he can't return it, the other clause was you can just keep it if you just stop talking about it, um, which I guess he's kind of said no to both options. That is not them trying to sue him. I think like that was an offer, but I don't think that's their way of being like, if you don't do these things, we're going to sue you. And at no point did they ever say that. But the $15,000 thing, again, is not them suing him for $15,000. That's them asking him if they can have the money that they loaned him back for the fight because that money is being taken out of the charity directly because that's how it works, right? They have to give money to the other fighter for training purposes. And if that's just $15,000 that they no longer have access to for somebody who's no longer participating in the fight, that is $15,000 wasted that otherwise would be going to one of these charities. So the dude is not being sued. Um, nobody is threatening to sue him. It's ultimately just being like, okay, if you have any of that money, can we put it towards the charity? If you have any left rather than you just getting to keep it now that this has gone down. Nick continues his thread by saying, Froggy got dropped because he made a joke about an insecure person's OnlyFans. Stop acting like he committed some heinous act laughing my fucking ass off. Are they giving the replacement fighter 15k to fight on three weeks notice? If so, it should come out of Anisa's pocket laughing my fucking ass off. This is Alana Pierce, Chara Lanazard. It's just fucking hilarious watching these total losers make an OnlyFans joke sound like he assaulted someone in the street. All of these people are completely disgusting and you should cancel your ticket to the event. I don't want to talk about this too much. There are a lot of people already talking about this a lot. And obviously I, while I am currently contracted to create a clash to perform a service for them, I do not represent create a clash. I'm not a PR spokesperson. That's not how it works. I used to be such a big fan of Tyler. It's not to say that I'm not a fan of him now or anything, um, but I think the whole situation is a real bummer. For anyone who doesn't know, basically one of the fighters got dropped and it was because of breach of contract and the breach of contract. I don't have even full understanding of everything that happened here, but he basically like he broke contract in a way that if I had done it at my job working for PlayStation, I would have been fired. So like that's that's that part of it. But one thing that I would like to take the opportunity to clear up just because um, there's a lot of misinformation about it is uh, some people, including all of the big YouTubers who just love jumping on this stuff without like really digging into it, which is always so frustrating. I've made a bunch of commentary about um, Froggy Fresh getting sued by Creator Clash, which is absolutely not true. Um, so let me take the opportunity to say that because I don't think anybody else has yet. A lawyer sent a document, but that document is not litigation and it's not them trying to sue him. Back on April 8th, Froggy responded to this thread by saying, really glad whoever this is is aware of who all did or didn't receive this gracious financial aid. To fight in their charity event, they approached me to be in. Admit she doesn't know what's going on. I breach a contract and they are not going to sue? Okay. Just a nasty email from a Creator Clash lawyer threatening to sue for damages they incurred to their brand. If I didn't sign their termination contract agreeing to shut up. Nick also tweeted, out. So the current spin is that Creator Clash never intended to sue Froggy Fresh. They just had lawyers draft up an ultimatum where they asked for 15k back or demanded Froggy stop talking about the event. We are also supposed to believe Creator Clash would never have followed up either. And when this didn't work, they sent another fighter out to make it sound like Froggy is robbing the charity 15 grand because he was unceremoniously thrown off the card three weeks before the event starts. These people are evil man laughing my fucking ass off. Nick in current day then quote tweets that old tweet and says, Froggy Fresh released the papers. Bro, I wonder why the dude thinks Anisa and Ian were going to sue him laughing my fucking ass off. Wherever did he get that idea laughing my fucking ass off? Both Froggy and the entire community have been repeatedly gaslit about this for a month. After this document from Froggy was released, Anisa then goes on her Twitter to attempt to clarify something. She says, I want to clarify something. We pay each fighter a purse of 20k for fighting in the event, which is awarded net 30 after you complete your fight. We came up with that number because because it will guarantee cover training costs, so no one loses money doing it. It's not literally for training. Most fighters pay for training and get their fighter's purse for fighting like any other fight contract. 
Sometimes we lend money in in good faith when someone can't afford to train to the level we desire. That's us advancing their purse. We did not pay for training. Not excited for whatever comments show up on this thread, but I wanted to make it clear the 20k payment is for completing the contract and fighting. We don't pay for training. We advance in good faith. I'd also like to selfishly point out that this is the exact point I was making in my video talking about the Creator Clash finances because people were under the impression that the fighters were fighting only for charity and not getting their own personal pay cut. The same video that Anisa mocked and misrepresented on the H3 podcast. I don't know. According to a couple of YouTubers, we're pocketing $1.7 million. So. Ooh. I never said in the video that they personally were pocketing $1.7 million. I said $1.7 million of Creator Clash 1's income was not spent on charity and therefore went to the fighters and whatever other costs there are to run the event. Which regardless of how expensive that is, I'm pretty sure it's significantly less than $1.7 million, meaning whatever's left of the $1.7 million after the event costs would be going directly into the fighters' pockets. Which again is not an issue, the issue is that they hadn't been being transparent about it, and that because Froggy got an advance on his purse, he wasn't stealing 15k from charity like Alana Pierce was alleging at the time, which was the point of that video. If you want to see me explain my argument more in depth, you can just go watch that video, but needless to say, Anissa's interpretation of my video was incorrect, and she just proved the point I was making in my video on her Twitter of her own volition. But moving on, Scourge HH responds to Anissa by saying, that's very fair. I think most of the drama was just a disconnect between people not understanding that for charity doesn't mean everyone is fighting at a loss, just means the majority of money goes to charity. Good to clear it up. Thanks, yeah, that makes sense. We expect a lot of training to happen in a year, and it's expensive, plus fighters take time off of content creation. The numbers meant to make the sacrifice hurt a little less. Dawa Hawkin responds to Anisa by saying, I thought the fighters weren't paid for the fighting. Charity event. Riley responds, I wonder how much Wasabi was paid, and how much that salary Ian and Anisa will be taking next year, or if they just decide to cash out and sell the brand in a few years for a few cool millions. Nah, no way. It's only for charity. I guarantee their salary will be healthy. Anisa responds, we haven't taken a salary for Creator Clash 1 or Creator Clash 2. Ian gets paid the purse for fighting though. Jack Shackleford responds by saying, I don't know why this is such a big deal. It's no money out of any charity's pocket. Fighters and their trainers need to be compensated for the work they put in and the show they put on. Keemstar was just reaching and pulling at straws. I don't know why it was criticized at all. Anisa responds, it's literally built into our budget and cost. They are why the event is happening at all. We ask them to sacrifice a year of their life and pay a ton of money while slowing down on content creation. Charity still benefits massively. Solar Being responds to Anisa by saying, If associating with Sam Hyde was such a deal breaker that you want all your money back in immediate firing, you should have put it in the contract. Bibble Lynx responds by saying, There's a difference between wanting money back and actually taking legal action to get it back. Every time I spend my money on random shit on Amazon, I want it back, but I'm not obligated to get it back laughing my ass off. Solar Being responds by saying, they have the right to sue him, but Idubs denied it in the video, and then Froggy released proof that they threatened him. If they just sued him and allowed people to call them villains, I wouldn't care. Anisa responds, Ian said we are not suing him, nor do we plan on it. The letter lets Froggy know that it's not his money, since he did not complete his contract, and like any legal document, outlines the rights we have as a company. This is very typical for a lawyer to do. Solar Being responds, if the money is in his account, it is about the money. Anisa responds, that's not how contracts work. Riley responds to Anisa by saying, why don't you just address that Ian lied about not threatening to sue? We all saw the gag order sent to Froggy Fresh. Anisa responds, he did not lie. We said we aren't suing him, and we never planned on suing him, which is true. It's very normal for a writer to write out what's within legal rights as a company due to contract breach. No one's suing him. He's keeping that money. Riley then shows the last page of the Froggy termination notice and says, am I missing something? Anisa responds, please sign this to keep the money, or if not, it's within our right to use the law to ask for it back. Also, again, Ian said, we we aren't suing him or plan on it. That highlighted part doesn't contradict anything he said. It is normal legal jargon. Riley responds, so, sign this and don't ever talk about any of us ever, and we won't sue you for money we advanced you that you spent on training while we run your name through the mud. Got it. Not a threat at all. Anisa responds, it's offering an NDA in exchange for the 15k. Yes. Also, we weren't running his name through the mud. We were hoping to part amicably. Anisa also tweets out, I feel like no one can read today or something. Meowry responds, it's not like they can't 
can't read. They are just dedicated to misunderstanding you. Anisa responds, yeah, very true. Bleh. Willie Mac show responds to Anisa's tweets by saying, imagine trying to sue a guy for money he's used for training and trying to get it back on a loophole. Anisa responds by saying, sign an NDA, keep the 15k that isn't yours. That was the offer. He wasn't interested. We didn't pursue any further, nor were we ever planning to. That's it. Willie Mac show responds, I'm guessing the NDA is so he doesn't express discontent for being kicked off? Anisa responds by saying, NDA was for bad mouthing the event. It was an attempt to minimize drama so close to the event to protect the company. This was drafted by the lawyers, and we told them we didn't want to pursue legal action before it was drafted up. We were hoping he would be okay with the trade, and we can split amicably, with him keeping the 15k, which is 5k less than the purse, and we could part ways with no bad mouthing basically. Froggy wasn't interested, which is fine, we just wanted to try and do a trade. Willie responds, it doesn't seem like a very amicable trade. You were just saying in a nicer way that the 15k he used for training isn't really his, and you can sue him for it if he doesn't sign the NDA. Nicholas Diorio responds to Anisa by saying, we sent this guy a legal notice and threatened him with an ultimatum, but ultimately never followed through. Why is this guy running around saying we are going to sue him? Sign this NDA or we will respectfully ask for our money back? This is the most brain dead shit I have ever read laughing my fucking ass off. They literally tried to scare him into silence and are too chicken shit to admit it was a threat. And that's about it for the tweets in regards to Froggy revealing the notice of termination from Creator Clash. I was going to extend this video a bit longer and cover some of the memes and reactions to the iDubs video that were posted on Twitter after I uploaded my last video, but it's completely unrelated to all of this notice of termination stuff and more comedic in nature than what was discussed in this video so I figured it was better to cut it off and post it as a separate video and that separate video will probably be coming out later today so if you don't want to miss when that drops be sure to subscribe to this channel with notifications on especially since I go over how Boogie reacted to getting called out in iDubs video which is very interesting you don't want to miss that if there's any other dramas you are interested in that I've covered be sure to go to my channel and check the videos tab in case there's there's anything you want to see there. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.